Hello. In this video, we'll take a look at some of the report templates that are packaged with Liberty Reports. We'll take a look at how to run the reports and also how to access the reports via Liberty Reports Desktop. Liberty Reports Desktop is a program that's installed with Liberty Reports that organizes all of your reports. So if I look at the Sage 100 Contractor tab, I see all of the reports that apply to Sage 100 Contractor. I can also add my own reports to this tab. Also within Liberty Reports Desktop is the Welcome tab. This is your access point for gaining access to all the product documentation. We're going to go back to the Sage 100 Contractor tab and we'll start with the Financial Statement Report. To run the report, I simply double click on the file. The first thing that I'm prompted for is to select the Sage 100 Contractor database that I want to report off of. In this case, I have two to pick from. I'm going to select the sample company. Okay, and then looking at the report, the first thing that I see is that there is an information tab that explains what the purpose of the report is, as well as some step-by-step -step instructions on how to use it. If I go to the admin tab, I'll see that there's some information here that I can supply to identify the report parameters. Now notice that currently the, the current fiscal year is not shown. I'm going to go ahead and refresh the report and upon doing so I'm prompted for my login information for a Sage 100 contractor. Now that I've logged in I can see that the current fiscal year ending date is 12-31-2011 and I can pick the reporting period that I want to show. In this case, I'm going to use period 6. This report shows me a, a standard balance sheet and a standard income statement. Keep in mind that because I'm in Excel, customizing this report is fairly easy. So for example, if I wanted to show information such as a percentage, let's say a percentage of individual income accounts as compared to my gross revenue it's just simply an Excel formula. I can then format that as a percent copy that formula down and then it applies to each line. And the changes that I just made would stick with the report if I saved this workbook and then open it up again later I would continue to see that same percentage column and any new accounts would automatically have the percentage copied down to them. This is just one example of a possible application of Liberty Reports uh, and, and the, the application would be where I want to design my own financial statements or customize the existing one. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and move on to the next report and we'll take a look at the job cost forecast by cost code. This is a great example of where we can use Liberty Reports to design reports that are interactive. Again, I'll select the sample company. And I'm going to go ahead and use the refresh button on the Liberty Reports toolbar to make a connection to my database. Okay, now that I'm connected to the database, I can see that the company name and path to the database is shown right here. And if I click the drop down for the job, I can pick whichever job that I want. So for example, if I start with job 221, the report automatically refreshes and shows me all the cost codes for that job. And I can very easily switch that to a different job. And again, it refreshes to show all the cost codes for that job. This particular report has a number of other input uh, parameters, such as the date that I want to use for the cutoff date of the different amounts that are shown, as well as the period, period or date in this case, and then how I want to reflect my forecasted values. So for example, if I select percent complete, then by default all of the cost codes 
I'm assuming I'm going to enter a percent complete in order to indicate uh, the progress. What's nice about this report is that it also allows me to customize that on a per cost code basis. So I could say that I want to use, for example, the cost to complete method, in which case now I'm going to enter the cost to complete on each line. But if there's a particular cost code where I think that I want to estimate it differently, I can simply change that right here and base it on hours or percent complete or cost at completion, for example. If I save this workbook uh, under this particular job number and then later reopen it, then all of my inputs will remain. Even if I refresh the data, these input values will still remain attached to the correct cost codes on the report, even as new cost codes get added. This is also a great example of where conditional formatting can really help me. So for example, if I type in a value that results in an overage, uh, the variance is, is highlighted in red, immediately, immediately alerting me to the fact that there may be a problem here. And then also you'll notice that on this report there are some column groupings. So if I choose to see additional information, such as the breakdown of the budget, original versus approved and whatnot, or breakdown of the hours, I can simply expand those columns to see those additional details. So I can control the level of detail that I want to see at any given time. Okay, let's move on to the next report that we're going to look at. And that'll be the job list with maps and weather. Again, I'll select the sample company. And let's refresh the report. Okay, this report may not look like a lot at, at the beginning because we're simply seeing a pretty standard list of jobs. What you'll notice is over in columns J and K, there are some hyperlinks. And these are using the Excel hyperlink function, you'll notice in the, in the formula bar, to take elements of the data, such as the address, for example, and using those elements of the address, it constructs a hyperlink. In this case, it's a hyperlink to Google Maps. In the next cell, it's creating a hyperlink to a weather source that shows weather information at the job site. So what's cool about this is that if I click on the hyperlink, it opens up Internet Explorer or your default web browser and shows me the location of the job. And of course, depending on the location, I might also be able to get a street view and see exactly where that job's at. Obviously not real time, but it gives you a good idea of the location of the job if you needed to get driving directions or just to get a general idea of where it's at. And the weather link works very similarly in that when I double click or when I click on that, it will open up to weather.com and show me the current weather conditions. The point here really is simply that, that I can now take reports that might have been just static content and link them to other things that might contain other useful information. Again, making reports more dynamic and interactive. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and close this report and we'll move on to the next one. So we'll take a look at the job schedule. Again, I'll use the sample company. And for the job, I'm going to select our burrito number eight job. And what this report is showing me is schedule information that's in Sage 100 Contractor. Uh, the report itself is simply returning the start and finish date for each task. 
over to the right, I'm just simply using some basic Excel formulas to indicate whether to shade the box or not, and then, then using conditional formatting to shade the box either blue or white or gray. This allows me to create in effect what looks like a Gantt chart. And so I can very easily scroll down through the job now and see where or at what point in time each task has been scheduled. And using the controls at the top, and these are simply just built-in Excel controls, I can scroll through this to see the schedule at other points in time. What's also kind of cool about this is that using the auto filter buttons, again another built-in feature of Excel that you can utilize, I can also select and quickly filter the information to see certain portions of the job, such as all those tasks that have a duration of two days, for example. Or if I wanted to see all the tasks that occur on a certain day. So again, this is a great example of, of using auto filters to very quickly uh, filter the information to see only the specific areas that I want. And also just using some built-in Excel functionality to give me a graphical and very interactive view of, of my information. Okay, let's move on to the next report. And that would be uh, ledger transactions. So certainly every reporting system needs to provide some ability to get into the detail, and that's what this report is all about. So on the admin tab, I can select some criteria to determine which set of transactions I want to see. I can identify things based on account number, for example, and specify uh, ranges of accounts. So I'm going to select all of my direct cost accounts in this case. And then when I go to the report tab, I can see all the transactions that met my criteria. Just like the previous report, I have an auto filter at the top. So now when I want to kind of slice and dice this information further to get just a subset of the transactions that I'm viewing, I can very quickly and easily do that. So as an example, if I wanted to filter this to see only uh, journal entries, I select journal entries, and now that's what I'm seeing. Or likewise, I can filter it to see a specific range of dates, such as, for example, maybe all of the transactions that occurred in April. Certainly also using the built-in functions of Excel, if I, was, if I was displaying all of the transactions, I could use simply the find function to go and find something that I'm looking for. Okay, so this is just another uh, good example of where I can take some very detailed information and very quickly and easily filter it and view it. I can sort it, I can filter it uh, to see just the information that I want and find, find the results that I'm after. Okay, next we'll take a look at the Project Manager Weekly Job Summary. OK, 
Okay, we'll go ahead and refresh the report so that we can connect to our database. Okay, like the other reports, I have some options on the admin tab where I can select some things that would filter the report to show just the information that I'm after. I'm going to go ahead and just accept the defaults in this case. And then I'll go to the job summary tab. Now in this case, we're actually pulling in a variety of different kinds of information onto the same report. So for example, I'm not just seeing a list of jobs here, uh, but I'm also seeing uh, the contract information for the job, the billing information, including receivables and what's currently due, the budget for the job, including budget changes, the actual cost to date, and that includes an assessment of how much is unpaid in my accounts payable system, and then some calculations of what my gross margin is and so forth. Using some of those column totals such as the receivables and payments and what's been paid to date and, and what's been received, I can also get a picture of the cash flow on the job as well. So I can see what my net cash flow for the job is to date. And I can also see what the projected cash flow is based on the current receivables balance and the current payables balance. A great way to monitor the, uh, the cash position or cash impact of a given job. Okay, I'm going to skip over the trial balance and vendor directory in this case because those reports are actually fairly simple in design. I'm going to focus next on the work and process report. Okay, again, I'll select my sample company. Okay, and the report's immediately generated to show me uh, a list of all the jobs that were open as of my cutoff date. And what's important about this is that I can actually change this. And as I change that date, you'll notice that other jobs pop in based on the fact that those jobs were open as of, as of that particular date and time. I can also change the cost period that I'm reflecting and the numbers change accordingly as soon as I change that, that value. So again, just another great example of taking a pretty standard report and making it a bit more interactive and also being able to make the report date sensitive and have the report automatically refresh as I would change different inputs. Okay, the last report I'm going, to, I'm going to take a look at is the new report template. And this is a great starting point if you're going to build your own reports. It's not required that you use this template to build a new report. You can definitely just start with a, a blank Excel worksheet and start adding reporting functions to it. Uh, what this report template does for you is it provides a little bit of structure so that if you wanted to have your reports look more like the reports that are built into the software, you can do that. So as an example, we have the information sheet and you can now fill that out to include uh, your information, uh, including your enumerated list of steps on how to run your report. Uh, there's a tab where you can indicate what parameters the report requires and a tab to build your report on. So again, it just provides some basic structure for building your report, but not, not required that you use this. Okay, so that completes our tour of the built-in report templates that are packaged with Liberty Reports for Stage 100 Contractor. If you have any questions, uh, please contact Event1 Software or your Sage business partner. Thank you.